In this video, we'll talk about modifications of tap root system. Of tap root system or tap roots. Now, what exactly we mean by modifications? Normally, roots perform two main functions. One is anchoring the plant to the soil and second is absorption of water and minerals. These are normal functions. If a root performs functions other than normal, then those are considered as modifications. So in this modification of tap roots, we have various categories. Why are these roots modified? Other than the normal function, what is that additional function these roots perform? One is for storage of food. Storage of food. So if tap root is modified for storing food, which is an additional function, then we will keep it under modification. The second reason for getting modified or doing an extra function could be respiration. So these roots would help in respiration as an extra function. The third modification is for nitrogen fixation. And the last one is for reproduction. We will give these roots their names also, but here we are talking about a root which is performing other than the normal function also. So if a root is modified for storage of food, then obviously it's going to be a little swollen because stored food is present. And we are talking of tap root. That means these are all true roots where radical is modified to form that root or radical has given rise to the root. Now, if you are talking about storage of food, the first category, we call these roots fusiform roots. Fusiform roots, again, are swollen roots. And if we have to define its shape, then it has a slightly narrower base. It gradually widens in the middle and then tapers towards the tip. I use two words. This is the base part and this is the uh, tip part. Because when we talk of root tip, this end is the tip part because this is the point from where the root originates and the radical gives rise to this long structure. So this is a base. This is the tip. Base is little narrow, then it widens in the middle and tapers towards the tip. Such a root is called fusiform. This is the primary root and sometimes we find some very fine hair-like branches arising from this. I'm sure you've seen this structure. This is, the example is reddish. So reddish is a fusiform root. We don't see the root. Only the upper leafy part would be available or visible to us above the ground. It is swollen because it is storing the food. And because it is storing the food, this is the part which we eat. Because we want to get the food from the plant. The second type of root is known as conical root. And as the name tells us, the shape is conical. So now if I draw a conical root, the base is wide and it gradually tapers towards the tip. And again, only this much part would be above the ground here, which is visible to us. Root is not visible. And here we would see these finer structures. Example is carrot. So carrot, which we eat, again, the reason for eating carrots is the same because here is the stored food, which is present in case of this plant. So fusiform conica. The next category, sorry, the next one, and this is, we are talking of only storage first. The third modification is known as nepiform roots. Nepiform roots. Shape. The base is narrow. It 
swells after that and abruptly tapers towards the tip. Again, the base is narrower, then it swells in the middle and abruptly tapers. Here also there was tapering, but that tapering was gradual. Here, swollen and suddenly it has become narrower. And again, here we would see some fine hair-like structures, which are the branches. So this main part is the primary root where food is stored. The example that we would take here is of beetroot. So in beetroot, this is the shape and this part remains underground. So only the leafy part is visible to us. The next one is known as tuberous. Tuberous means the shape is irregular. So this is the base and the root is something like this. There is no pattern. Somewhere it is narrower, somewhere it is swollen. So these are beet, uh, sorry, these are tuberous roots where the shape is not uh, decided or shape is not fixed. The example that we take here is of four o'clock plant. This is the common example of tuberous root. In all these four categories, the roots are swollen because they have to perform the additional function of storage. So tap roots are modified for performing the function of storage. So these are four modified roots for storage. Now we will take the roots which help in respiration. So I'm talking about these roots here. Such roots are known as pneumatophores. They are also called respiratory roots, pneumatophores. These roots are normally found in plants which grow in marshy areas. Marshy area plants. In marshy areas, the soil is waterlogged. Waterlogged means when there is water accumulated in, a, in an area for a very long period of time, then water goes into each and every possible space, including the air spaces. That means there is no oxygen available for the roots to breathe. So how would the plant get oxygen? This plant, which or normally these plants which grow in marshy areas, they have their normal root system, which is very deep to anchor the plant. And the upper part is seen separately. From this primary branch arises a lateral branch. A branch grows like this, laterally. And it is arising from the main root only. And that is why we are talking about this as modification of root. And at certain places, from this lateral branch arise such conical structures. And these conical structure, if I enlarge one, this is the conical structure that we see, these ones, and they are known as pneumatophores or these respiratory roots. On these pneumatophores are present the openings. And through this, these openings, these roots would take the air. That means they are able to breathe. In this area, because it is waterlogged, sorry, there is no air space left. Water has taken that uh, air space also. So there is no oxygen for these roots to breathe. And if they don't get oxygen, the plant would die. So these pneumatophores help the plant to take oxygen. Now, what are these pores called? These are actually lenticels. And they are also sometimes referred to as pneumatothodes. But they are actually lenticel-like structures. So from these openings, gaseous exchange would take place. That means here, the tap root is modified 
for taking oxygen and that is why we are calling it the additional function for respiration. So we have talked of two types of modifications. One is for storage of food and the second one is for respiration. Now in the next part, we'll take up two more modifications that is for nitrogen fixation and how do these tap roots help in reproduction.